What is up everyone? Welcome back to our lawn and welcome to a beautiful, beautiful Saturday. So I'm out here, I have a number of things to do, one of which I've already done, but you're gonna watch now, and that is cut the fairway. So let's get that done, get you through that, and then we'll walk around and talk about where we're at, kind of give you an update on it. So I quite often start right here to be able to talk to you about the fairway because it is the part of the bent grass that I seeded and it is the nicest. So this right here has finally recovered. We had snow mold damage. We had the issues that I caused last year. This is all recovered, thick as can be, looking tremendous. There are parts that don't. So let's go talk about those. This part here is always bad and always has been because when I moved in, it was just weeds and I never seeded. So basically what has happened is whatever grass that was able to come in through here and spread is what's come in, a lot of which Poa, and that's okay. And the biggest issue right now, as you can hear at my feet, is drainage. We've got a ton of water, and this is the lowest part of my property, so look at that. Water comes right up. And I've cut now today and yesterday, and this is a good lesson in, yes, there are the calendars, yes, there are the ideal circumstances, the ideal timing, the ideal everything, but I hadn't cut this in a week. It was probably an inch tall, if not even more than an inch tall. Yes, it's wet back there. Yes, that's not ideal for that section to run a real mower over it, but I had to, there was no other option. Like I will always say, you have to do the things based on your mind and not just based on a general rule somebody gave you on the internet. Avoid what you can, but there are things that you can't avoid. And that brings us to the green. Right now we're looking at the green expansion where the bent grass was that we seeded. That has all pretty well recovered and is doing quite well. The areas that haven't been renovated didn't survive as well but there's grass in here and that will fill in no problem. Like I said, I have talked about seeding this. I'm actually not so sure I'm gonna do that anymore, but we'll see. And then the main stage of the putting green, the parts that have done really the best to this point right through here, looking really, really good. Again, I have this maintained at 0.15 and the fairway's at 3 eighths of an inch. And then my backyard looks like poo. So much like I said in the spring, I try to do as little as possible and that includes the fact that I haven't fertilized, I haven't treated for diseases even though very much have a need to treat for disease back here, but my time's limited. I now have child commitments Monday through Thursday every night, basically into the evening, into the dark. So there's only so much time. So obviously the practice facility is gonna get the most attention, followed by the Kentucky bluegrass in the front, the backyard, which has just always been here. It's never been renovated. We haven't spent a ton of money on it. It's just gonna have to do, but I guarantee you, any normal person that comes over to my yard and looks at this, you're gonna tell me my lawn looks great. I hate it, I don't like it, but that's a lesson learned and something that we gotta mature in is that good enough sometimes is good enough. You guys might remember this little side bit from my spring video and how this was all matted down, had a ton of dead, dead foliage in it and I said I wasn't gonna rake it. So we are now about a month out from that video. Let's take a look. And it is not as thick as it could be. As you can see, a lot of that material is still in there and the grass is working its way up through, but it did work its way up through. This is Kentucky bluegrass. It will spread. It will deal with this. It will be fine. So we flash forward a few weeks into the future in this video. I'm back out here cutting the front yard. And this is my gentle reminder to you that there is no reason really ever to fertilize in the spring unless you have some identified reason why you would want to do it. Because look at that, look at, I mean, look at, look at how good it looks. Another thing, and the reason why, let's talk about this as well. Look at how little we're cutting off. I don't know if it does any justice. Maybe only two inches or so. 
I haven't cut since last Sunday. It's been almost exactly a week since I've cut and I'm not, it's not overgrown. And it's in the spring when it's growing the most aggressively. So I'm not pushing it to do a bunch of top growth, expend a bunch of nutrients, a bunch of carbohydrates, a bunch of energy. Just let it hang out and look at it. It looks so good. No iron, no fertilizer, no fungicides, no peach, nothing. I have applied nothing. I have watered never because we've gotten a lot of rain, so it's cheating. But it's, stop fertilizing in the spring if you don't need to. Now on to the ongoing process of every time it rains or storms, all of the sticks in the world come back and cover up my putting green, so I have to run the Honda over the top of it. So I don't feel like filming that, so let's just... And there we go, it's done. 